So I'm Andre Brock. I'm an associate professor at Georgia Institute of Technology, where I teach about uh, largely digital and social media, but from a cultural and racial perspective. Uh, some folk would call it science and technology studies. Uh, my home field is a very uh, a little known field called social informatics, which investigates the, in, the implementation of computers in institutions, largely businesses, but also informal ones as well. And so from that perspective, uh, we learned from failure cases on how to understand how technology uh, makes its way into organizations and society. And it, I say failure cases in particular, because in many cases, the introduction of a technology that was promised to be transformational, more productive, more effective was often led by elites who did not have to use that technology on an everyday basis, but had the power to enforce that technology's use on people who reported to them or who were consumers of the products that their company made. Right. And so from that perspective, I'm really skeptical about a metaverse happening in ways that would be, as uh, some of your, your previous speakers have mentioned, that would be equitable or useful, uh, much less immersive. So I want to thank Avi for mentioning uh, Snow Crash earlier, because Snow Crash is one of my favorite novels ever. Uh, we could talk about the merits of Neil Stevenson as an author later, right? But there were multiple metaverses in the the book that Stevenson wrote uh, back in the 90s. One of them was the one that a lot of te technologists love, uh, the one where uh, entities such as corporations, banks, and uh, other uh, institutions were represented by abstract shapes in a virtual space connected by uh, uh, a meta... Um, monorail that would take you around the entire information sphere, right? But there was another one that was more banal that speaks to where we are today. And that was the role of the government employee who was surveilled on multiple levels by her employer to determine whether or not she had her eyeballs on the screen at appropriate moments, how many bathroom breaks she took, the length of her communications with her superiors and other coworkers, the content of her communication. And to me, that's what the promises about the metaverse are leading us toward, as opposed to some sort of com uh, communicative utopia where everyone will be able to have more immersive experiences. What I see instead is a uh, more segmented, more extractive set of environments and institutions that will be asked to, forced, I'm sorry, not even asked, to participate in as a matter of course. And I'm thinking of this in part because uh, I do study history to a certain extent, and I've long discussed uh, the ways in which the telephone um, was deployed across the United States. Uh, current landline usage is at 40%. 40% uh, of American households have a landline. The vast majority of people now, one or more members in a household have a cell phone. Many households are cell phone only. But when the telephone was introduced as a way to that businesses took up in order to have communication between themselves and their customers, black folk were left out of that information uh, expansion of that information environment. Right. We either shared uh, telephones and uh, one person who had the landline in their house in a neighborhood uh, or we were forced to wait around that telephone for job opportunities or to communicate with our employers. Right. And that type of inequities has persisted even as more people have moved to cell phones, right? Um, many, uh, my youngest just got her first job at McDonald's and her grandmother told her that, you know, when you go looking for jobs, you should walk house to house. I mean, business to business and get applications and show them that you're willing to work. And she laughed, my, my daughter laughed at her, which I told her wasn't a good idea, right? But she said, you know, that's not how applications work today. Many folk apply for jobs using either um, uh, websites like indeed.com, Right. Or the, the companies themselves have their own bespoke websites where the applicant walks up to a kiosk. This is the metaverse that we already exist in, where it's not necessarily augmented reality. I would still call it an extractive and exploitive reality where people can only access on the terms that employers and the government deem necessary. I'm, I'm driven to think of the ways in which um, SNAP benefits for those who, who are outside the U.S. Uh, the U.S. provides a means-tested program that provides mothers and the and poor folk with uh, uh, funds so that they can buy food and other commodities in order to live a daily life. But the U.S. moved those uh, systems to a digital system because of persistent stereotypes about poor people, particularly black people and fraud, right? And so these systems were moved to online systems such as debit cards and the like. And as such, they have really reduced the ways in which these folk can have any sort of agency with the type of food products they buy or use or utilize.
right? So I'm rambling a little bit and I'll, I'll try to, to be brief, right? My, my overall thought is equity, as uh, the young lady mentioned earlier, is going to be a persistent problem. But I'm really uh, kind of concerned about the idea that a system such as the West, and we can add China to and other spaces to that as well, which is driven on the extraction of humanity for governmental or capitalistic uh, uh, motives, right? And then the eventual exploitation of natural resources, including people. I have trouble believing that it will provide any kind of uh, AR or VR environment that is of use to anybody but those who have the most capital, the most wealth, right? Uh, I remember uh, an interview that Bill Gates had 20 some years ago where he said he didn't even allow his children to have iPhones, right? Uh, and I see that only the people who are forced to use these systems will be encouraged to use these systems. And many more folk, uh, I just finished a class uh, where we were, I was talking with the young women about what type of social network they would want to be on. And one of their first complaints was they get interactions from older men who they don't want to have any contact with, but who are somehow enabled to have access to their personal sphere, right, through these social networks, I don't see how that would be any different with the metaverse that we build, no matter how graphically intensive it is. And I appreciate the the efforts of the last two speakers, Lewis and and um and Avi as well, right, with the efforts that you guys have done in this space. But immersion only works when you don't necessarily believe that the in the, in the that the the tools that you build uh I'm sorry. I take, let me let me rephrase that. Immersion really only seems to work when you believe that the tools you build are somehow better for humanity than humanity themselves.